Hi students! Once again, I am Ma'am Dea, and today we will be talking about the grade 10 science module for week number 2. The title of this week's module is PS Shaking Leors. What do you think is it all about? That's right! Just like the GIF that you can see on the screen, we will be talking about earthquakes. However, the competency that we want to target for this week is the same as the competency that we have targeted last week, which is to describe and relate the distribution of active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts to plate tectonic theory. Here are our more specific objectives. First, to recall the characteristics of seismic waves in terms of speed. Second, explain triangulation method in locating epicenter of an earthquake. Third, locate the earthquake epicenter using the triangulation method. And finally, plot the active volcanoes, earthquake epicenters, and major mountain belts in a world map. As you can see, the fourth objective has been discussed in the past week. We will be discussing more about this this week. Also, in this video, I would like to focus more on seismic or seismic waves and I will also create another video on how to use the triangulation method in finding the earthquake's epicenter. Let's start with this short news article I got from the internet. The title is, Earthquake Hits Northern Philippines Felt in Manila. This is very recent and it was written last October 4 of this year. Now, I will give you one minute to read the contents of this article and afterwards, I have a few questions. Your one minute starts now. Okay, time's up. Can you identify some terms that you think are relevant to our topic today? Okay, some have answered magnitude. Yes. Okay, earthquake. Shaking. Correct. Seismologists. Tsunami. Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. What else? I think we have already covered all those important terms. In a short while, we will be discussing what these terms mean. So here are some important terminologies that you will encounter every time you are studying earthquakes. I know you have heard some of this because you have discussed earthquakes when you were in grade 8. First, we have the epicenter. So the epicenter is the location on the surface of the earth directly above the focus. Now what is the focus? The focus is the point within the earth where energy is released. So in the previous article that you have read, what is the epicenter? Correct! The epicenter is in Balayan Bay found in Batangas City. Now if we will try to use this picture to accurately describe where the epicenter and the focus is in relation to the article that you have read a while ago, the epicenter, which is Balayan City in Batangas, can be found in this point. So the epicenter is found in the surface of the earth. That's why the epicenter is usually characterized by a place. Now the focus is the point directly below the epicenter, which is Balayan City. So this is the origin of all the energy that was felt on the surface. Next, the magnitude. 
The magnitude is the number that characterizes the relative size of an earthquake. The higher the number, the stronger the earthquake. The magnitude of the earthquake in the article is around 5.4 and it is characterized as moderate. However, it can already be felt by us humans. Now, what are seismic waves or seismic waves? Seismic waves are the energy released from an earthquake and are recorded by seismographs. They are generated by the movement of tectonic plates. So seismic waves, in other terms, they are called earthquake waves because they are the waves that are emanating from an earthquake. A seismic wave has two main types. We have the body waves and the surface waves. Now what do you think is the difference between the two? differentiate the two, let's look at this picture. Now, can you identify the difference? That's right! Body waves travel into the interior of the earth, while surface waves travel through the crust. Now let's go to the types of body waves. By the way, in your module, you are only given the two subtypes of body waves. In this video, I will also be showing you the two subtypes of surface waves. So let's start with body waves. The first one is a P wave or a primary wave. Now, can you describe the wave using this GIF? Again, P in P waves stands for primary waves. Now, why are they called primary? Because they are the fastest. Next, they are also longitudinal. Can you remember what a longitudinal wave is? Very good! A longitudinal wave has its movement of particle and direction of propagation to be parallel to each other, just like in this GIF. So if the particle is this black box, you can see that the particle is moving from left to right and the direction of propagation of the wave is also from left to right. Therefore, the movement is parallel and the wave is longitudinal. Also, primary waves can move through solid rock and fluids. Now, if there are primary waves, we also have S waves or what do you think is S? Correct! Secondary waves. Now observe the movement of the particle as shown in the GIF. What can you notice? Alright, the direction of propagation of the wave is still from left to right, however, the particle motion is up and down. They are no longer parallel, but they are now perpendicular. So we call that transverse. Now going to the characteristics of secondary waves, secondary waves are called secondary because they come after primary wave. In short, they travel slower. And then, just what I have mentioned a while ago, they are transverse. And secondary waves can only move through solids. They cannot travel through fluids. 
Any questions? In the next slide, I have placed P waves and S waves side by side. Here you can compare the movement of the two. Again, body waves are waves that can travel into the interior of the earth. Are there any questions? So if there are no more questions, let's move on to surface waves. A while ago, we said that surface waves are those waves that do not travel in the interior of the earth. They travel only on the surface. That's why they are called surface waves. And in your module, um, it was not really discussed what the subtypes are, but here we will be discussing the two subtypes. So the first one is called the love wave. Yes, you heard it right. It's the love wave, but it's not named after love, but it is named after the scientist Augustus Edward H. Love. Now, who is Augustus H. Love? Augustus Love is a British mathematician who worked out the mathematical model for this kind of wave in 1911. Now, how do we characterize love waves? Love waves are the most damaging type of surface waves. The second type of surface wave is a Rayleigh wave. A Rayleigh wave causes most of the shaking felt during an earthquake so whatever shaking you have felt during an earthquake i am sure you have already experienced one uh, these are caused by Rayleigh waves and this is named after the scientist lord Rayleigh, but his real name is john william strutt he also discovered this type of wave Are there any questions about the different types of seismic waves? So if there are no more questions, this is the end of our video. I hope you have learned something about the different types of seismic waves because uh, we will be using this in our next discussion which is all about the triangulation method. Thank you for watching!